monde, si vous avez manqué nos visites à la Maison Laurier et au Canal Vido la semaine dernière, visitez le site web de Mon Passeport Pap pour voir l'épisode 3 de Saisir votre patrimoine. Cette semaine, on va visiter deux lieux qui sont un peu plus loin de nous, Port Wellington et le Parc National des Îles de saint laurent On s'est joint avec des employés de Parcs Canada qui nous ont parlé de l'importance de chaque lieu. Le Parc National des îles de saint est assez unique en ce qu'il est constitué de plusieurs propriétés isolées qui ont été données à Parc Canada au fil des ans. Et en fait, plusieurs de ces morceaux de terrain sont des îles entières, ce qui est vraiment cool. Port Wellington est aussi vraiment intéressant. Il était une forteresse qui est construite après la guerre de 1812 et a joué un rôle important dans les révoltes de 1837 et 38. Alors sans plus tarder, voici quelques faits séants de nos visites. 107 years ago in 1904, that's when a group of locals from around here decided to group together and petition the government to protect this space because it's really special and beautiful. So St. Lawrence Islands National Park is in the Greater Lakes St. Lawrence lowlands, but it's anomalous because it's the strip of granite. The granite that makes up the islands also impacts the trees and life that you find here because it's a northern type of rock. So this is where we see northern and southern species mixing and mingling. A common loon, which is normally found in the north, cottage country, uh, flies in the same sky as the turkey vulture, which is traditionally a southern species down in the States. Believe it or not, this landscape didn't used to be a beautifully uh, green and blue river full of islands. It used to be a, a mountain range. And over thousands of years, the glaciers ground down the mountains, and then as they receded, uh, the, the fresh water melting from the glaciers made the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River flooding the ground down mountaintops. And what used to be a thousand mountaintops became a thousand islands. Ninety percent of all aquatic life is born and raised along shorelines and wetlands. And there are so many species that rely on these wetlands. Um, they're very sensitive and important that we protect them here in the park. We use fire, prescribed fire, which is fire that we set on purpose and monitor very closely to be safe, uh, to help certain species that are dependent on fire uh, survive, like pitch pine and deerberry. This is the Thanksgiving address um, that the Mohawks of Akwesasne give before and after each meeting or, or gathering that they have, and they thank all of these elements of nature like the stars and uh, elder brother sun. And the cool thing, if you ever get down to Mallorytown Landing, is that each one of these symbols is carved on an accent rock and distributed all around Mallorytown Landing. And a challenge is put to all visitors of the park to find each one of these rocks and identify all of the symbols uh, to sort of complete your experience and, and recognize all these elements. During the War of 1812, the British were at war with the United States. This was a British colony, and so you had to build something to protect this major highway, which was the river. But we're in the 1840s period, when a regiment called the Royal Canadian Rifle Regiment were stationed here. And these guys, uh, they aren't represented at any sites anywhere else in Canada. They so. would have had to serve 10 to 15 good years with the British Army before coming here. And they were here just to maintain peace along the borders. And they were here, they were at Fort Henry, they were at Fort George, they were all along the borders. They could have families living on site with them. So rather than having a fort filled with soldiers and a few women and children wandering around, this one had half of its population as women and children in the 1840s. You were no longer able to live here at Fort Wellington past the age of 14. You were considered an adult. So you had to go and find yourself employment, how you could perhaps be an apprentice, a, like apprentice to learn to make shoes, to a blacksmith, how you could be a washerwoman, um, you could perhaps be sort of a nanny or something, but most likely young women were getting married at this age, and young men would also be able to join the army if they wanted to do that. Well, Lieutenant Sharp was the officer here. There were two officers originally. Captain Black, the higher ranking officer, chose to live in the town of Prescott, and this became almost like a nine to five job for him, whereas Lieutenant Sharp got this whole building to himself, and he was managing on site 24 hours a day. The guard room was used to store men. So in between sentry duty, which meant you'd be outside watching for any imminent attack, 
you would come in here to warm your feet, rest a little bit, maybe play some cards. So there is a bed here. If you were to lay down for a quick wink, you'd have to keep all of your implements on, all of your pouches and, and uh, cartouche and all that. This is the powder magazine, and if a single spark was introduced into this powder magazine, the entire fort would be history. Eh? Si vous visitez pendant l'été, vous avez la chance d'avoir des démonstrations de fusils et de cannes. Et vous pouvez même vous habiller comme soldat du 19e siècle et recréer une situation de guerre. Et ne vous inquiétez pas, il n'y a aucune limite d'âge pour cette activité. Je leur ai demandé. <rire> Maintenant que nous avons eu la chance de visiter quelques sites de Parcs Canada, il est temps à commencer à penser au sujet de notre vidéo finale. Si vous voulez savoir ce que nous allons choisir comme sujet de notre vidéo, il faut attendre à la prochaine épisode. En attendant, vous pouvez visiter le site web de Mon Passeport Parc pour en apprendre plus sur les parcs nationaux, les lieux historiques nationaux et les armes marines nationales de conservation. C'est tout pour aujourd'hui. À bientôt!